Morning everybody. Yes, I've had a haircut. We've been waiting for months now for this government to turn around and address the concerns that we've asked of them to give us answers. About nine months ago, we pushed the Prime Minister's office, possibly longer than nine months now, and we asked the Prime Minister to provide us with proof that he had the line of authority to sit in the office of Prime Minister. And he turned around within less than 24 hours and issued his cabinet with a flag pin of the uh, blue ensign with the seven-pointed star. He in effect told all of us that he did not stand in Australia and that he stood with a foreign occupier that runs this government. He told all Australians that he did not stand with any of you. Your Prime Minister has been pushing for a republic from the Prime Minister's office for the last 50 years. Going back to Robert Menzies, have they been pushing for a republic from inside the Prime Minister's office? This, this exact action, is an act of treason. To undermine the line of authority that gave you the office of Prime Minister in the first place, and to sit in that office and attempt to undermine the Constitution from that office is an act of treason. Scott Morrison has committed an act of treason by issuing his cabinet with a flag pin that is outside of the Constitution. The Attorney General was then asked because the Prime Minister's office went silent. And the Attorney General has remained silent. And I'm asking all of you now to remember your Anzac. In a week, it's Remembrance Day. The 11th of the 11th, when the sun shines through that little window in the shrine and lights up the word love on that stone in that shrine, you remember your Anzac for a reason, because they forged a kingdom at a peace treaty after spilling blood across the world. You dishonour those Anzacs by not standing for what they left you. Scott Morrison openly, in the media, on television, in his own words, disregarded your Anzacs, in his own words, showed an act of treason against what your Anzac left you. And the Attorney General, after the debacle with um, Craig Thompson and Jackie Lambie, and both of their silence, now, Jackie, you, your team sent me a message on Facebook asking me not to be rude on your Facebook page. Jackie Lambie, you went silent. I think rudeness is at the bottom of the concerns in relation to the treason you are committing. You may speak in a parliament and ignore everything that was addressed of you but it doesn't go away. You committed an act of treason against the Constitution, and you sit in a parliament and allow people in the office of Prime Minister to promote a republic, which is an act of treason. And the Attorney General, who is obligated to bring this before the parliament, has failed. He actually went silent. It's quite quick and simple to bring Rod Cullerton before the Parliament over a failure at the sections of law, but you won't bring anybody else up before it because it threatens who you are, doesn't it, Attorney General? So the people of this country now have to realise the Attorney General is and will always be working for a foreign power. He is not your government. He is not your judiciary. 
He has actually allowed the executive branches of government to control the judicial. They ignore Chapter 3 of the Constitution in all courts, including the High Court of Australia. You've all been hoodwinked, lied to, and what's worse, stolen from and conned. For instance, you own Telstra. And the government sold you what you already own. They sold Telstra in T1 and T2 shares to the, to the public. Who is the public when the private owned it all and the public managed it? They conned you into buying something you already owned off them to make them richer. And at the same time, they took control of it because you only bought shares. You acknowledged that you lost ownership to be shareholders of your telecoms network. This is how retarded Australia is. And, and unless you actually snap out of this stupidity and start showing some loyalty to what your Anzac actually died for and left behind for you. And if you can't follow that constitution, because this government doesn't follow it, it's not under that constitution. It's a foreign military occupier. It's pushing rules of usufruct on you under administration and has done for a long, long time. It is the reason why Gough Whitlam shut down the seat of government and you no longer have a link to the king's domain and your crown. You have a foreign crown in your country and you are in Stockholm Syndrome defending this crown at the expense of your country. And I mean that, at the expense of your country. Every time you use their reserve bank notes, your children are paying for that later. Every time you acknowledge them, vote for them, be party to any of their claims, you might as well have stepped out of the Commonwealth and acted in treason to your own Commonwealth. You're trading with a foreign power. You are helping a foreign power run your country. And the Attorney General well knows this. It's the actions of all of you as a people that don't afford us the ability to put Christian Porter in jail and Scott Morrison, John Howard, Malcolm Turnbull. These are all technical criminals at law. But you have no power because you don't stand up together. You don't aim to get your country back. You don't aim to be loyal to each other. You can't pay each other properly. You can't treat each other with respect in that essence. A workman is worthy of his hire. So why are you paying each other in debt that your nation has to pay off? Here, I'll pay you in something that your children will have to slave for. You do that to each other. And the Attorney General will keep his power. And the Prime Minister will continue to go to America and lapdog up to the administration, which you saw recently. Scott Morrison travelled under a naval ensign to a marine base to be paraded before a marine band to sit down with Trump before marine flags to have Trump say to Scott Morrison on the TV that Trump only cares about the numbers and Australia's numbers are good right now. Does that not demonstrate that Trump is the administrator of your country 
and that you are under administration under the rules of usufruct under a Hague Convention because of that? The world is like this. You're all fighting each other instead of directing your energy at the people that have stolen everything off you for the last hundred years. You have directed your energy at each other instead of looking at the problem of putting your children into further harm because of these people. Iceland was able to jail these people. Iceland was able to put these people in jail cells for acts of treason, for bankruptcy fraud, for banking fraud, for accountability purposes. Now, if your Prime Minister's office has committed an act of treason by promoting a republic from inside the Prime Minister's office, when do we see them face a jail cell for their actions against the Crown? Everyone is sitting there on their hands, complaining. But none of you are changing who you are. None of you are thinking about how you're going to pay the next time you employ someone. You're just going to throw them a fistful of Reserve Bank notes and accept that as the way things are. When the fact of the matter is, is that you're borrowing from a bank and your children will pay that back. And if you don't recognise that today, you're selling yourselves into future slavery through your children. And if you don't educate your children as to the fact that this Australian government is occupied, under administration, under laws of armed conflict, obligated and locked into a whole set of war laws. It can't run rampant here. It has a whole set of rules to abide by while it's here. The reason it acts the way it does is because of your disloyalty. So on Remembrance Day, I'm expecting all of you to get a red ensign. I'm expecting all of you to stand together. I'm expecting all of you to go down to Anzac Memorials on Remembrance Day and fly the Red Ensign. I'm expecting all of you to stand up and finally show the Prime Minister that he works for someone, not you. You can only do this flying the red ensign and acting as a people. Now, last thing I'd like to address, because Remembrance Day is in six or seven days, so I've heard some talk about people wanting to protest and attack the administration on Remembrance Day, and I'm going to tell you flat out, are you retarded? You would rather turn into a zombie and attack the attacker instead of being loyal, respectful, non-belligerent civilians at war. You would rather turn into belligerents at war and attack your attacker. All that's going to see is what you've already seen. Pepper sprays, police, horses, blah, 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 blah. You start to stand loyal and show each other the respect you all deserve by flying this. When you can stand together as one people under one flag with one destiny to get your country back, you might have a fighting chance. Until then, give up. And I shouldn't say give up because all I can see is that you never started. When you can join together and show everyone that flies this red ensign the respect they deserve as Australians, support them, work with them, employ them, be employed by them, feed them, lift them up on their feet. The reason I say this is because 
the last seven or eight years of my life have been hell trying to recover. No one lifts anybody up in this country. And it takes for us, the real hurt people, to turn around and help you. That is sad. So what I'm asking all of you for a change, instead of arguing with each other and trying to better than each other, just pick up a red ensign and be a family together for once. Lift each other up. Stand united. Help those that are downtrodden. If a judge in a courtroom tells you, so what, to your own country, when they are demonstrated to be acting out of a foreign power, your own judges are telling your country, so what? Your own judges work under the Attorney General who went silent. And it's up to all of you to stand in justice, not expect it from a liar like Christian Porter. You stand together in your constitution. You start paying each other in gold and silver. You start standing in courtrooms in more than one. While you watch each other walk into court and fail, you fail them by sitting on your hands doing nothing. Why aren't you 30 strong in that courtroom telling that judge? They told you an Australian flag, so what? So why aren't you standing in a courtroom saying, foreign oath, get down? Because you haven't got the strength, have you? To be united, to stand together, to fly this flag, to find direction, to get your country back.